morning everyone I'm coach Spivey and we're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video and I'm so happy because once again I get to reach teach and help build the positive great mindsets of our future so in this video we're going to be going over how to build a cladogram so let's get started on this chart I have four organisms listed I have we have a lizard we have a rabbit a dog and a cat and over here to the side, going down, we have the characteristics that these organisms may possibly have. So what we're going to do is we're going to go across each organism and see if they have that characteristic. And we'll put a check to signify that they do. So four legs. Do lizards have four legs? Yes. Rabbits? Yes. Dogs? Yes. Cats? Yes. So all four of them have four legs. Now let's look at fur. Do lizards have fur? No. Do rabbits have fur? Yes. Dogs? Yes cats yes and then are they carnivores that means do they have to, do they eat meat in order to survive so lizards no rabbits no but dogs yes and cats yes and then retractable claws that means that they can actually extend their claws out and then pull their claws back in so lizards no rabbits no dogs no but cats yes so now we filled out the characteristics that these organisms have on this chart. Now let's move on to creating our own cladogram. So if you notice, I'll go ahead and fill this chart out right here so we can use it to make our cladogram. Now what we'll do right here is we'll draw a line going up representing, and this is going to represent our blank cladogram. So we're going to put our organisms on this cladogram and we're going to list them so we're going to look at the traits that they all have in common all of them have four legs so all of them will be on here but then as we go up our cladogram we notice that organisms have less and less traits in common so lizards have the least amount of traits in common with all the other organisms followed by our rabbit then followed by our dog and then lastly our cat so now before lizards we notice that all of them have four legs in common so we'll put that trait right here all of them have four legs in common but we notice all of them don't have fur in common lizards don't have fur so we'll put that trait right here so that means that the organisms after this trait have fur in common so that would be the rabbit dog and cat and then if we notice as we continue to move on, all the organisms are not carnivores. Only the dog and cat are carnivores. So we would put that characteristic right here. And then only one organism has retractable claws and that's going to be the cat. And so I go ahead and abbreviate retractable claws. So let's take a look at it. Here are the things that they have in common. Here are those characteristics. So four legs, all of them have four legs in common because it comes first. But then as we move further, only three of them have fur in common. That's going to be our rabbit, dog, and our cat. Our lizard is before the fur, so it doesn't have that. And then only two have carnivore in common, the dog and cat. And then one has retractable claws. And that's how you build a cladogram. Now it's time for you to create your own cladogram. And you're going to check off the following characteristics for each of these organisms. So if they have it, put a check by it. If they don't have that characteristics, then leave it blank. You have two minutes to do this and you can pause the video beginning now. So now let's check and see how you did. So first with vertebrae, all of them have vertebrae, so amphibians, bony fish, reptiles, and birds, mammals, and sharks. Next, a bony skeleton. Amphibians, bony fish, reptiles, and mammals have a bony skeleton. Sharks do not. As far as limbs, amphibians have limbs or arms and legs. Reptiles and birds have limbs, and mammals have limbs as well. Bony fish and sharks do not have limbs, so we don't see them with feet or arms and then an the amniotic egg and what this means is that they have a protective outer layer on their egg so the only two organisms or uh, the only organisms that have a protective layer over their eggs are reptiles and birds and mammals and then last hair or fur 
And the only organism on here that has hair fur is going to be the mammal and the other organisms do not. Now it's time for your first check for understanding. And you're going to make a cladogram based upon the characteristics on your cladogram chart. You have three minutes to make your cladogram and you can go ahead and pause the video beginning now. Now let's see how you did on your first check for understanding. And if you notice on this cladogram, sharks have the least amount of characteristics in common with the other organisms. All of these organisms have vertebrae, and the only thing that shark has in common with the other ones is their ver vertebrae. So we start off with the sharks. As we move up, bony skeleton is comprised by bony fish, amphibians, reptiles, and birds, and mammals. Sharks, once again, do not have a bony skeleton. And as we move up, the organisms that have limbs are amphibians, reptiles, and birds, and mammals. Bony fish and sharks do not have limbs. And then as we continue, an amniotic egg, only the reptiles, birds, and mammals have an amniotic egg. And then if we move up, only the mammals have hair or fur. So the mammals are all the way up here at the top. So let's take a look. We start off at the bottom with sharks, bony fish, amphibians, reptiles and birds, and then up to mammals. Now it's time for your second check for understanding. And you're going to analyze your cladogram or cladogram chart you created and answer the following questions. You have three minutes to do so and you can go ahead and pause the video beginning now. Now let's see how you did on your second check for understanding. Number one, what characteristics do all of the organisms in your cladogram have in common? If you notice on this cladogram chart right here, all the organisms have a vertebrae. Number two, what organisms have an amniotic egg? So if we take a look, there are only three organisms on this chart that have an amniotic egg, and those are gonna be reptiles, birds, and mammals. Number three, what characteristics or lack of characteristics separate fish from the other organisms? So let's take a look at fish. Fish do have a vertebrae and they do have a bony skeleton, but they lack limbs, amniotic eggs, and hair or fur. Number four, do all of these organisms have a common ancestor? And your answer would be true. And the reason why you can tell they have a common ancestor because on your cladogram, all those organisms extended from another organism. So if we take a look. Here's a cladogram right here. And the cladogram started off with sharks at the bottom and we went up to mammals. But if you notice, there was a line extending before sharks. So that lets you know all the organisms on the chart had a common ancestor. Then number five, what characteristics do mammals, reptiles, and birds have in common? So let's take a look. Reptiles, birds, and mammals, they have a vertebrae in common, a bony skeleton in common, limbs, and an amniotic egg in common. They do not have hair and fur in common that is specific to mammals. Now let's go ahead and put a check by the organism if they have the following trait and leave it blank if they do not have that trait. You have two minutes to complete this and you can go ahead and pause the video beginning now. Now let's see how you did. All of the organisms on this chart have cells. Remember, in order for something to be living, it has to have cells. Only four of the organisms on this chart have a backbone. So that would be the human, the tiger, the frog, and the catfish. A slug does not have a backbone. Then only three have legs. That would be the human, tiger, and the frog. Only two have hair, which would be the human and the tiger, even though my hair is hard to see on this picture. And then only one organism on here has an opposable thumb, and that would be the human. Now it's time for your third check for understanding. And you're going to make a cladogram based upon the characteristics on your cladogram chart. You have three minutes to do so, and you can go ahead and pause the video beginning now. Now let's see how you did on your third check for understanding. If you notice, all of the organisms on this chart have cells. And a slug only has one thing in common with the organ, other organisms is that it has cells. As we move up, four of the organisms have a backbone. So catfish, frog, tiger, and human have a backbone. A slug does not. 
Then as we continue to move up, three organisms have legs, and that's going to be our frog, tiger, and human. And if we keep going, only two of the organisms are going to have hair. That's going to be a tiger and a human. And then only one organism on this chart has an opposable thumb, and that's going to be the human. It's time for your full check for understanding. You have three minutes to analyze the cladogram you created and answer the following questions. You can pause the video beginning now. Now let's see how you did on your fourth check for understanding. Number one, what characteristic do all of the organisms in your cladogram have in common? If you notice, all of the organisms in the cladogram have cells in common. Number two, what organisms have a backbone? So let's check and see. If you notice, four organisms have a backbone. That's going to be the human, the tiger, the frog, and the catfish. And what organism does not have a backbone? And the only organism that does not have a backbone is going to be the slug. Number three, what characteristics or lack of characteristics separate the slug from the other organisms? Well, if you notice, the slug only has cells in common with the other organisms, so it lacks a backbone, legs, hair, and an opposable thumb. Number four, do all of these organisms have a common ancestor? And yes, this is true. All of these organisms extend for a common ancestor, and you can tell on your cladogram by looking at the line at the very bottom. That shows that they have their ancestor in common. As we go up the cladogram, it shows that their characteristics or traits cause them to separate and differentiate. Number five, what characteristics do humans and tigers have in common? So we take a look at it. Humans and tigers have cells, backbone, legs, and hair in common. Tigers do not have that opposable thumb in common with humans. Number six, what organism is the tiger most closely related to? How can you tell? So if you notice, we're going to look at that one as in, and think about it as in, what organism does the tiger have the most characteristics in common with? And the tiger is going to have the most characteristics in common with humans. And then how can you tell? Because if we look at our characteristics, Tigers have cells, backbone, legs, and hair in common with humans. That's the most common between all of the organisms. Number seven, what organism does a slug have the least in common with? So we notice the slug only has one characteristic or trait in common with all the organisms, but the human has the most amount of characteristics or traits. So the slug and the human are going to be the most different from each other. So the slug will have the least common characteristics with the human. And then how can we tell if we look at the number of characteristics shared or look at the number of characteristics that each one of them has? Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this science tutorial video was helpful and beneficial. And remember, positivity always trumps negativity always so no matter what no matter what your situation bring that positivity in and you will always win and you will always shine ladies and gentlemen i'm coach spivey sign on my son jordan spivey peace and have an awesome wonderful positive day